This is a tutorial that will take you through the basics of how to start and create a Vortal file. If this is the first time you've seen Vortals, you'll probably be presented with the screen much like this. You may have some files in the center of the screen, but what's most important for this point is to click New Vortal. And when you click New Vortal, you will get a new screen, and in it you have this project setup box. So the first thing to do is to give your project a name. Ignore everything else except for aspect ratio and click 16.9 and then choose create. Once you've chosen create, you'll be given a slide setup menu. And in this, we're going to choose 2D slide. And you can see here now a 2D slide has appeared. Now you can load in any amount of different uh, items into this, but for now I'm going to choose to add a text box. So I click the text box button and you can see here some text has appeared. In order to add text, I simply click in here and I add my text. Now if I want to move this around, I have to unselect it and then click and hold and now I can drag. Now if I was to delete this item, uh, I have to click and hold for a moment and now I can simply delete it. If I click very quickly, I'm in edit mode and if I click and hold, I'm in select mode, which is a mode which I can then drag or I can move or rescale. If I'm in edit mode, I cannot move the box around. And now that I'm happy with my text, I can create an image. And I do that by coming back up to the top of this menu and choosing the image button. So I click that and it takes me to a navigation folder. Navigate to the tutorial image folder and click uh, Stegosaurus 1. And that has now created an image on the slide. And if I select the image again, some guides will pop up. And if I click and drag it, I can move the image around and then scale the image by dragging these guides along. So now I have my title and my image. I'm ready to create a second slide. So I've gone ahead and I have created the elements of the second slide, which is two text box and an image, which I've loaded from the uh, image folder for the tutorials. So now it's time to create my virtual reality slide. And to do that, I click add slide again. And now I go to VR slide and click that as my option. And in doing so, I have now created a virtual reality slide. Now navigating in virtual reality is much more complex than it is in a 2D slide. And so it might take you a little while to get used to using this system. But the basics are this. To move the camera forwards and backwards, use your mouse scroll wheel. And if I roll backwards, the camera moves backwards. And if I roll forwards, the camera will move forwards. Now if I want to rotate the camera, I press the Alt button and then I click the scroll wheel down and hold them together and then I move them. And in doing so, the camera will now rotate around a central point. Again, this might take you a little while to get used to as it's very unusual to navigate in 3D space like this. But after a while, you'll get used to it and it becomes second nature to very quickly move around. So if I want to pan the camera left or right or up and down, I click the middle mouse button and hold it down with nothing else pressed. And then I can move the camera left to right, up and down. If you find yourself a little confused and lost, like here, I don't really know where the camera is pointing, I can right click and this menu pops up. And I can move to here and click on free camera. And that will reset the camera back into the position where I started this frame. And I can scroll back and I can look at the frame. Once you're comfortable with navigating in 3D space, it's time to add some content. And what we're going to do is add a 3D model. And we're going to come back up to the top menu and we're going to click this 3D model button. And we navigate to the 3D model folder. And I'm going to choose Stegosaurus 90K. And here we have 
a loaded 3D model of a Stegosaurus. Now, if I want to move this around, I can select it by clicking with my left mouse button, and this gizmo will appear. This is called a transform gizmo, and it helps me move this object in 3D space. So if I want to move it in the direction of this red line, I click the red line and I can move it in that direction. If I want to move it in the blue, I click that and it will move in that direction. And again, the same with the green. If I want to rotate or scale, I have a bunch of different options. So I right click and here I have my transform options and I can choose rotate, which gives me this transform gizmo for rotating. And again, I have these different colored axes to help me rotate it. Be very careful when you rotate something because it can be a bit tricky to get it back into that original position. And if I right click again and choose scale, I'm shown this gizmo, and this gizmo is slightly different. Again, be careful when you start scaling things because if I scale in with one of these boxes, it will scale only in one direction, which means I'll squash or I'll stretch my model, and I don't always want to do that. So if I just want to scale this up uniformly, I can use this gray box in the middle. So if I click that and drag, Depending on the direction I drag, I can either scale it up or scale it down. And that's what I'm going to do now. So I've scaled them down and I'm quite happy with his size now. One gotcha to think about when you're placing this model in this area is that when you click free camera, you will see a square right here, a little intersection between these two lines. When you've chosen free camera and you're looking at this little X, that will be the position of the virtual reality camera when you load it in the player module. Which means this will be the view that the user gets. So you have to think very carefully about where it is that you're going to put this model. It might be best, in fact, to put it here so that when the camera position for the user is here, the user just has to look forward. It'll take you some time to get used to this, but once you have the hang of it, you'll be able to place the camera in no time. One way to avoid this being a problem is if you go to this button here, the thumbnail on the side, and right click and choose Slide Properties, you will see this option here, VR Camera Interaction. And you'll see at the moment it is locked. And that's the default position. And what that means is when this loads up in the player, the viewer won't have any option to move around. The camera will be locked in position. But if I click this and choose free fly, this means that the user will be able to use the keyboard or the Xbox controller to fly around in virtual reality space. And since that could be a lot more fun, I'm gonna choose that right now. So that's my virtual reality slide set up. So what I'm going to do now is choose to add an augmented reality slide. So I go back, I click add slide, and I choose AR slide. Now I'm given a whole bunch of options here, but I'm going to ignore all of them except for tracking plate. I'm going to click that, and I'm going to choose a tracking plate that I have available. You might find you have different tracking plates available. So I'm not going to tell you which one to choose, but I'm going to choose this one. I choose Create, and now an augmented reality slide has been created with a tracking plate that I will use to create my augmented reality. And what I want to do is add that 3D model to this slide as well. So I click 3D model, and I click Stegosaurus, and I click Open. Now again, I think this is a bit too big. So I'm going to select the model, I'm going to right click, I'm going to choose scale, and I'm going to scale this model down to a size that I'm happy with. And I'm pretty happy with that. So now, this presentation is pretty much ready to go. However, there are a few other things you can add to make this a bit more effective for someone viewing this on a mobile device. 
So if I go back to slide one and click on the thumbnail, I'm going to add a button. So I click here for button, and this opens up a little options menu. And I click on the button opens drop down, and I'm going to choose slide. And then I'm going to choose button image. And I'm going to navigate back to the images folder. And I'm going to choose a button color. And I think I might choose mid blue seven. Now the next thing I'm going to do is choose the slide that this button will open. And what this means is that when this button is clicked in the player mode, it will take you to whichever slide it is that you select here. So I'm going to select slide two. I'm going to choose make button. And now we have a button. So what I want to do is put this button in the bottom right hand corner. And I'm going to add some text. And you notice that when I click text, it was quite hard to actually see the text box appear. And that's because this is a black picture and it hides the text box, but it is there. So I select the middle of the screen and I drag it out and I scale my text box down. And I'm going to call this start. And I might make it a bit bigger and I might make it white. So now I have a button that will take me to slide two. And in slide two, I'm going to add some buttons too. And these buttons will take me to the virtual reality and the augmented reality slides respectively. Once you're happy with your presentation and you're ready to present it, depending on the device that you want it to present on, there are two ways to do this. If you're going to present on your own PC, click File and choose Present Project. If you want to export this for a mobile device, choose File and Export Project. And then navigate to the folder you wish to export the file to. Once you've exported this, copy the file to your device, click it, and it will open the presentation in the Vortals player.